Over time, I've noticed that a good chunk of my subscribers have either never watched a NASCAR race or have just started getting into the sport. Just and with the quarantine into it. finally being partially lifted this week, and NASCAR being the first American sport to resume competition, albeit with no fans in attendance, there's going to be an influx of new viewers checking into NASCAR for the first time. So I thought it might be a good idea to explain what exactly the hell is going on Look here how for they are. NASCAR is actually a lot like baseball or golf. The more you know about it, the more interesting it becomes. But the less you know about it, the more ridiculous it seems. So with information at a premium, here are eight things that you probably didn't know about NASCAR. Let's see if we knew First off, these. NASCAR was started by state and federal criminals. Although NASCAR's Damn. founder Bill France was never a rum runner himself, NASCAR's early rosters from the late 40s and early 50s were filled with convicts and guys who just never got caught. Before Damn. and after Prohibition, Damn. intoxicating spirits were banned outright in several states in the southeast. So enterprising young men throughout the South souped up their hot rods so they could outrun the cops when they were on one of their nightly runs. Interesting. Eventually, local legends grew, and people wanted to know which of their local bootleggers was the best driver. <laughs> and so tracks and competitions were organized, oh, hey, and at some sick. point somebody had the bright idea to start selling tickets to these get-togethers, and stock car racing was born. Bill France, a Daytona Beach resident and businessman, as well as a former race car driver himself, saw the growing interest and established the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing. NASCAR. And oh, that's interesting, you know. That started like as a little backyard thing to a proper platform. It started to run away from the cops first. <laughs> Pretty hilarious. They f this is this is the original Too Fast Too Furious. Yeah, this is it. The rest was history. <laughs> While many NASCAR stars had their fair share of run-ins with the law, there was none more famous than the last American hero himself, Junior Johnson. A 50-time winner in NASCAR's top series, Junior wow. Johnson was arrested by federal revenuers in 1956 when he went to fire up his father's still one night. He spent one year in federal prison and was eventually pardoned by President Ronald Reagan many years later, Ronald although Reagan. he had begun the appeal process under the Carter administration. But in true bootlegger fashion, if you ever brought this up to Junior while he was still alive, he'd be quick to remind you that he never got caught behind the wheel while he was making one of his runs. Junior gained a reputation on the track for being a tough-as-nails driver. He wants to make sure that driving ex uh, reputation is not affected in any way. Yeah. Now, yeah, I got caught, but I wasn't behind the wheel. I, I wasn't, wasn't in the car, right? They found me <laughs> at the local <laughs> grocery store. If I was in the car, no way. I was in Walmart. An innovative mechanic. <laughs> So innovative, in fact, that he is widely regarded as one of the Cops most quick. cheatingest figures in all of wow. NASCAR. And that gets me to number two on this list. Cheating is not only tolerated by NASCAR fans, but is actually celebrated. I know wow. this comes as a shocker and is at odds with every other sport in existence, but hear me out. Although the sanctioning body of NASCAR is very stringent with its rules, NASCAR fans have always turned a blind eye to cheaters in the sport and actually sing their praises amongst themselves. Teams are allowed to either build their own cars or purchase them from other teams. And even though NASCAR has strict specifications that those cars have to adhere to, there's always a little wiggle room left to exploit. There's an old saying in NASCAR, if you ain't cheating, then you ain't winning. Everybody does it, although they're usually bending the rules or just breaking a rule before it's on the books. Junior Johnson was so prolific in the art of rule dodging that he actually had one of his creations put into the NASCAR Hall of Fame, the Yellow Banana. A 66 Yo. Ford Galaxy that was one of the most disgustingly illegal cars in the history of the sport, and wow. got its name due to its shape and its yellow paint job. But if there was ever a mechanic who could best Junior Johnson in the dark arts of stock car cheating, it was Smokey Eunuch. With a silly name but a penchant for disregarding the rules at every turn, NASCAR fans became enamored with Smokey's antics. He did anything to get a leg up over the competition, making his engines too big, mounting the bodies too far forward on the frame, increasing the size of the fuel tank, and when officials became wary of that, they mandated the size of the fuel tank to 20 gallons. But Smokey then just made the fuel line wrap around the car, which squeezed an extra gallon or two out of the limit set in place. <laughs> Smokey in one famous about. example, Smokey had his fuel tank seized by NASCAR tech inspectors, saying that it was too large and he had a total of 10 infractions that needed to be changed. Damn. They'd pulled the fuel tank out of the car as extra punishment, thinking that Smokey would have to push the car back to the garage. But instead, Smokey just jumped in the car, cranked it up, still with no fuel tank in it, and drove it back to his crew while shouting Ow. at the officials, Make that 11 things. True to his name, Smokey fogged up the lines between <laughs> right and wrong. And even to this day, this proud tradition of rule bending oh, yeah, is still hilarious. alive in NASCAR. That as recently so as 2018, during the Flexgate scandal, Stuart Haas racing cars have manipulated the bracing on the rear window to give way at high speeds to direct more airflow towards the spoiler, an exploit famously found out by NASCAR Reddit. Being as there was no rule in place to break at the time, Reddit. NASCAR let the wins by Stuart Haas stand but said that anything of the like found going forward would be dealt with harshly, as teams found out the hard way later. 
The Stuart Haas team of cars beat the law at the time, but that actually leads to the question, wait, there are teams in NASCAR? Well, yeah, number three. NASCAR is a team sport. Uh, one team owner might that. expand his table from one car to include two, three, or even four cars, the maximum allowable as of right now. Piloted by different drivers with different crew chiefs who prepare the cars, these teams share information and discoveries, but still prepare their cars independently according to the preferences of the driver. I'm not going to lie, them cars are sick. They look like Hot Wheels cars. Yeah. Oh, look, Auto Trader. We know about Auto Trader. Shell. Oh. We've got so much sponsorships. There must be so much money like yeah. involved now. Sometimes this leads to friendly and not so friendly competition in house, which may or may not have beneficial effects on the teams. It's all dependent on the chemistry of the people involved. So the owner of the entire operation has to manage his personnel accordingly. Mm -hmm. Just For as sure. important as the team of mechanics are the pit crew members who service the car during the actual race. These fearless men plucked from the rosters of professional and collegiate athletic programs, braved the chaos of pit road and changed tires and put new fuel in the car, yeah, all speed. while making adjustments what about and repairs speed? as dozens of other cars and teams are all doing the same thing on pit lane. Under wow. ideal conditions, a NASCAR pit crew can change four tires, top off fuel, and make adjustments to the car in less than 14 seconds. Wow. And yes, sometimes accidents do occur. <gasps> it's because he could have, he probably, because they're on speed, he must have flopped. And took to end the oh, driver didn't see God. it. It should be alright. But thanks to safety regulations and it's the just skill of other drivers out there on okay pit lane, after. those incidents are few and far between. The pit crew members are the athletes that make the team the best they can be on race day. But what about the guys behind the wheel piloting the race car itself? That gets us to number four. Yes, the drivers are athletes. It takes a special type of crazy to hop into a metal car an wearing a fireproof suit and Go swing a car around at 200 miles an hour. But it also takes an insane amount of physical fitness as well. Temperatures How? inside the car can reach as high as 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And in this oven, you have to think critically about your next move and have cat-like reflexes, all while communicating to your crew about how your car is holding up via radio. NASCAR legend Bobby Allison used to prepare for these insane conditions by driving around his home in Hueytown, Alabama in his personal car in the middle of the summer with the windows rolled up, with the heat blasting, and while wearing several jackets. You know, it's mad. Several jackets on top. When in the UK summer, how... Hard is it for us to drive without aircon? Super hard. And the UK summer is nowhere near like America summer. Yeah. So America summer is probably like four times hotter. And on top of that, with jackets and the windows shut, he must have been sweating. And a helmet. And a helmet. Yep. And the leather gloves. That's a good way to prepare. That's mad. I never thought about that. Mm. That's literally so insane. How hot it must be. And bear in mind, you're performing under pressure. You're literally mentally... It's true. You have to, like, literally click off your brain in terms of how hot you're feeling. You need you need to focus on the moment. You won't feel it because yeah. you need to... Your mind is somewhere else. But and the car's going so fast, you yeah. don't have time to think. Yeah, you, Your body has to be able to handle it, though. Yeah. Because you'll pass out. Yeah. Mid-driving. Mm -hmm. Drivers nowadays take trips to the sauna, sauna, have a strict fitness regimen, and diet they have to adhere to in order to stay at peak performance. The man we can thank for this breakthrough is Mark Martin. A man often derided as undersized during his early career, the 5'6 Arkansas native took up weightlifting and high-level fitness programs to make up for it, and found out that the workouts actually made him better equipped to handle the demands of NASCAR racing. And soon after that, nearly everyone followed suit. Even in his oh. 50s and still winning races, Mark was still rocking an 8-pack. Gee, 8-pack in Martin his 50s. Mark was still winning races in his 50s? Yep, that gets us to number 5 on the list. NASCAR drivers can have incredibly long careers. That looks so sick. The average successful NASCAR driver will make his first starts in his early 20s, and will retire in his mid to late 40s. Some drivers even go beyond this. In 1992, Harry Gantt set the record that still stands today as the oldest driver to ever win a NASCAR race at 52 years old. Wow. Mark Martin got close in 2009 at age 50, but no driver has challenged the throne since. And to give you some perspective, if the youngest driver to ever win a race, Joey Logano, who got his first win at the age of 19 in 2009, beat Harry Gantt's record, we would have to wait until 2043. <laughs> Current drivers yeah. span all age groups and backgrounds. Joey Logano from Connecticut will turn 30 this year. His teammate Ryan Blaney is 26 and hails from Ohio. And one of the best in the business right now, Kevin Harvick from Bakersfield, California, is 44 and has just signed a multi-year contract extension. Hey, maybe he'll be the one to take handsome Harry Gantz. Who knows? Okay, so we've covered the who, the what, and the why of NASCAR. But as you sit down to watch the race, what should you be keeping your eye on? Yes, there's daring, death-defying moves and beating and banging action happening every so often. But what keeps NASCAR crazy, such Ooh. as myself, glued to the TV for the entire duration of the race? Number Guys, yes, the comment section has been blowing up. 
asking us to react to NASCAR crashes. That's all I'm seeing on our NASCAR video. React to the crashes. We will. It's on our list. We've got so many videos. We upload every day. He has a long list. We will get there. <laughs> yeah. I promise you guys. And it will be soon. It won't it's be pending. too long. Don't worry. It's coming. Number six. It's all about strategy. Most that NASCAR races one. are between four and 500 miles long. And as you probably guessed, you have to stop for tires and fuel along the way. But when do you do it? Your tires will wear out faster the harder you push them. So do you just take it easy and make up time in the long run? No. Or do you push it now and push. end up losing time as the race goes on? You need to make it to the front in order to win, but when and how you do this matters in the grand scheme of things. Mm. Helping the driver and the crew work this out and masterminding the whole plan is the crew chief. He oversees the whole operation and decides what adjustments to make to the car according to the driver's inputs over the radio. He also makes suggestions to the driver on how hard to push the envelope. Some drivers like their crew chief to handle the mental heavy lifting. Others prefer to run at their own pace and just let the crew chief worry about adjustments. Either way, pairing the right drivers with the right crew chief is crucial to ending up in victory lane at the end of the day. But there's one other guy in this conversation that we haven't talked about yet. The spotter. That gets us to number seven. Guys, in America or the US and any states that NASCAR's uh, popular in, is there like a NASCAR experience day where you pay money to get tickets and you can actually drive a NASCAR car? Uh, do you know what I mean? Like, a, you know, there's, I think they do that for Formula One when there's like F1 uh, days. I'm not saying you drive a Formula One car, but you get to have an experience with a Formula One car where you may be getting driven or something along the lines of that. Is there something like that for NASCAR? Because if there is, I'm telling you now, me and Fats are getting behind the wheel. Just don't drive 300 miles per You're hour. You're getting behind your own one. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay i'll beat you she drives a golf car now 400 brake horse you drive a fast car i know it's nowhere near that but you drive a quick car yeah. you can handle speed you know how to drive yeah i'm gonna whiz through so let's see get my helmet on get a helmet and go it'll be fun <laughs> i would love to do that Drivers can't actually see that much inside of their cars. Due to safety regulations, drivers are pretty much bolted into their seats and their um, head movement is very limited. That is so to help with this, drivers have spotters that communicate with them constantly, telling them where the other cars are out on the track, if there's a wreck up ahead, or what the leader is up to. These crew members, perched high atop the press box, are usually family members of the driver or former drivers themselves, who are handpicked based on their ability to communicate effectively with the driver. On those crazy double file restarts, the information spotters provide is understandably extremely important. Mm. In the early days before radio communications were widely available, oh. lots of fatalities and injuries were Duh. caused simply because drivers didn't know what was happening up ahead. And as you probably expected, any time a car is on the track, it is required by rule that the driver has a spotter up on the spotter stand to give him an extra set of eyes in the sky. You know what, I really like that because the amount of reduction in crashes based on that must be very high. Because you know, if you're speeding, you've got no one telling you there's a crash around the corner you won't see it and you're not breaking in time and also another thing this is that obviously you guys have told us that it's so common in nascar is the cars are always rubbing against yeah, each other as well i've seen a lot of comments on that you're so much more likely to have a crash like that as yeah, well for sure it's mad veteran drivers usually only have essential communications with their spotter and crew chief as they can almost read each other's minds However, newer drivers typically have a lot more radio traffic as the spotter kind of doubles Spin as a cheerleader out. and guide. And here's the coolest part about all this radio chatter. You can actually listen in. Using various apps on NASCAR.com or by renting a scanner at the That's track sick. itself, That's you can sick. pick a driver and listen in so on fun. all the back and forth action for yourself. And yes, sometimes the teams listen in on each other to see what kind of strategies they're cooking up. So don't be surprised if they start talking in code. But fair warning, these are grown men in a high-stress environment. Sometimes they say things that aren't exactly PG-rated. <laughs> so think twice about having your kids join in. Yeah. Some tracks, though, are so massive that they require multiple Damn. spotters in different oh. locations to help out the driver. And that gets us finally to number eight. Holy NASCAR crap. goes to a lot of very different racetracks. And yes, we even make a few right-hand turns. Every driver in the series has to have a mastery of different disciplines in racing. Whether we're talking about the two mile and up super speedways, the half mile short tracks, or the twisting and turning road courses, by the end sick. of the 36 race schedule, every driver will have been put through a gauntlet of demanding venues. Tracks come in all shapes and sizes, and some of the lower divisions, NASCAR's minor leagues, even race on dirt. These circuits dot the U.S. landscape oh, from major markets like Atlanta dope. and Las Vegas to small towns tucked away in the southeast like Bristol and Martinsville and everywhere in between. There are no away games, so to speak, in NASCAR, but with the vast majority of teams being located in North Carolina, having to pinball across the U.S. is a demanding effort in its own mm. right, as hauler drivers will work around the clock driving a garage on wheels to and from each racetrack during the year. 
The crews and drivers will fly out to the track a few days before the race and spend hours running practice laps until they're finally happy with the car and move on to qualifying time trials to set the field, where the fastest driver starts at the front, also known as the pole position. Well, that about wraps it all up. Eight things you might not have known about NASCAR. Not gonna lie, I'm really liking NASCAR, you know. The way the car modifications are as well, when you see them in the garage, like, I'm into all that. I would definitely love us to go and watch a race. Yeah, that would be crazy. That would be so cool. I'm like, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> You'll be a hype as hell, so would I. I'll be in my element. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for recommending the video. Don't worry, the crashes are coming. That's coming in the next couple videos. For now, don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace out. Bye.